Okay, guys. So I had a comment that was made on a very old video clip. Um, it honestly was a long time ago. Um, it was a time when I was still with my former partner and if you've been following, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. There was some issues and unfortunately I ended up with the short end of the stick, so to speak, because all of my trying to do things that he wanted um, resulted in my not being able to maintain a savings account anymore. All of my stocks were gone. I didn't have anything to fall back on anymore. And in reality, I'm starting to look back and wonder if it was actually because that way I was more dependent on him. And I, I decided to do something that was a little different and I've been putting this out on Facebook and TikTok. So the format's different. It's the vertical. So bear with it. I know a lot of people have issues when I keep changing, but it's because it depends on which social media I'm using at the time I record the video, a lot of the, a lot of it. So there's some snippets in there too of, um, a lot of the things that I've done recently. So bear with it. Um, it is, trying to point attention to people who might have been in the same situation to help motivate, to be something uplifting. And I hope to encourage you to really self-reflect and decide if where you're at now is where you want to be. I'm going to switch gears for just a second. Granted, I don't like deviating from my regular content, but I feel like there's a lot of people out there that have a pretty tough time finding themselves. And now I had been going to counseling because of a prior relationship, a couple of them, that really messed me up. And I thought I was crazy. I thought that there was something wrong with me. And from what I've been told by said therapists, my self-awareness changes the diagnosis. So there's things that I have to constantly deal with. Um, especially the situation right now has been really, really rough. It's been pretty depressing. It's been very difficult because I have a very high drive and when I can't perform the things that I have set out for myself, I have a very difficult time dealing with it. And I really wanted this clip video to hopefully put a little hope in the people who see this that might think that my content has like somebody in the background helping me somebody in the background okay if I haven't said anything if I haven't mentioned a person like my dad or my mom or my brother those are the like the three people that ever helped me with anything anyway every once in a while I might get a hold of my buddy Luke everything's me this is everything I do I don't have help with everything but I wanted to put this out there for a second Everything that I'm doing is because I'm single. Because I got tired of being in relationships that were narcissistic, demanding, and financially draining. My last relationship was with someone that was like that. And, you know, the world got to see him at his best. The perfect gentleman. The most amazing person on the planet. Very helpful. Just a wonderful person. And that's not what he was like with me. So... It was financially draining. It was very manipulative. And I decided, you know what? I'm just not going to be in a relationship anymore. I don't want kids. I don't have kids. I have an awesome nephew. I've had relationships with children. He had five. Um, prior to that, I'd had other relationships with, with kids. Or kids. And I was totally 
happy to just be the fill-in parent. Um, having any of my own is just not anything I'm really interested in because it is so pushed on society anymore to be in a relationship, to have to have a partner to pay for your rent, to have to have children in order to get your talk, your tax credits, to everything based on a family unit, and then family units never stick together anymore. So why would I be committed in that? I am extremely pleased to find myself being alone for the last three years. And I've been able to do everything I set out to do. My father is completely blown away at my abilities because he didn't realize that I was capable of doing the things that I could do. Because every time I was in a relationship, I ended up being miserable because they wouldn't let me be who I was. I'm not the go out and get your nails done type of person. I'm not the type that wants to get super dolled up and go out and, you know, wear something low cut and sexy. It's just not my thing. You know, I kind of grew out of that phase because work was more important. Life was more important. Being financially stable was more important. And after all of my savings were run through with my last relationship and I was left with having to start over from rock bottom again for the umpteenth time in my life, um, even with as long as our relationship was, the result was the same. And I wasn't going to do that anymore. So I took over to the YouTube channel and because he didn't care to keep up on it from our last projects because none of his projects ever came to fruition. He was only ever getting halfway through them and then bailing and then all of my money went to waste helping him do it. So I revamped my YouTube channel to do tiny home property taking care of business, trucking, because that's what I originally wanted it for. And everything got twisted into what he wanted to be showcased. I'm perfectly fine with the very small number of followers I have on YouTube. I'm blown away at how many followers I have on TikTok because it took off in half the time. It's not a lot, but for someone who likes to live very simply and this is just an outlet this is just something I enjoy doing because people enjoy it if it weren't for that it wouldn't be a big deal I've had some scrutinous people come on and ridicule and criticize especially because I'm I'm female telling me I was doing everything wrong come to find out which wasn't hard to find out they're just being trolls. Everything that I've done has been by code for my state. Everything I've learned how to do was by professionals so that I could learn how to do it. And a lot of the things that I learned in college, I was able to put into play because, you know, for the last 10 years, my two specialized welding abilities had gone to waste. And it was infuriating that I spent all that time and money in college and I never got to be a welder. So now I'm doing it because I can do it for my own projects. Fine. It is okay to take care of yourself. It is okay to be alone. It is okay to be happy because you don't have a single drain on anything you're doing and you can live your life without anybody else judging you. All of the most important people in my life have been nothing but complimentary and supportive because they didn't realize that this person was hiding all the time because of who I was with. My father flat out told me while I was at work with him on a job that we were doing together where he used to work, that he sees the difference and he's been completely impressed with my abilities. That he was not aware that I could take care of my big rig, that I could take care of doing a welding project, that I could map and calculate 
how to load and unload said big rig because of that particular project. And my situational understanding of things is different than if I had to read it out of a book. The minute someone shows me how to do something, I can duplicate it. No problem. But that's part of the issues that I have. I have textile sensitivities that I really have to push beyond in order to be successful. There's learning short timing or shortness where I don't learn the same way as other people. It takes me longer to get to the answer that they do because my methods to get there is more compl complicated to them, but easier to break down to kindergarten status for me going backwards versus going forwards. I excel in things that are different and being different is always okay. It makes you that much more unique. So if it comes down to brass tacks, honestly, this one's not about me. It's about everybody else who feels that way. It's okay to be single. It's okay to figure out who you are and just be happy for a while. Just doing you. And it's even more okay to know that you don't have to be the first person to raise your hand in class. Because at some point, somebody's going to recognize the greatness in you that was unrecognizable before. And you don't have to label it with a disorder or disability. Because Lord knows I haven't. Therapists did, but I didn't. Because I can move beyond that. So I do have the hardware that I bought that's for doing the latch setup on that back door. So I can't really finish any of the framework until I know exactly what the hardware is going to need so that I can build the frame in um, because the one section is going to be closed off completely. So I want to make sure I get those supports in the right place so that when I latch it closed, it latches tight, solid the way it needs to be. So I'm waiting on those to arrive. Um, it's uh, getting down to just the, the tedious light stuff, which um, I'm trying to knock out all the heavy hard stuff first. And then the light stuff I can do as I'm healing after my surgery, um, tentatively of course, as soon as I get light duty clearance. Um, so things like uh, sanding off the rest of the paint where I need it sanded off and then putting the patches on, things like that, that's pretty easy to do. It's, it's time consuming, so it takes most of the day. But a lot of that I can either do from the ladder or sitting up on top of it. And then um, anything else is going to be like cutting out the front section still needs the mangers taken apart and the saddle racks removed, the divider bars taken out and a few other things. But it's coming along. Down, It's getting down to just the easier stuff to put in. Things like the wall wood, the floorboards, the wiring. I've got all the lights for it now. It should come together pretty quickly as soon as I can get the, the more difficult parts of it wrapped up. Um, I can start working on all of that. So I'm going to keep plugging away at it, but this is what I got so far. Oh, sunny day, sunny day. Um, oh man, that hurts to hold my phone. Um, shoot. I'm going to try and do this quick because this is actually bothering me holding this up. So I got a new roof vent installed. I just finished putting it in because that one I can sit on my butt on the roof and do pretty well putting the screws in. And then I finished getting this bad boy cleaned up. This was that old transport dolly that I took apart so that I could salvage the sheet metal. It's a tad bit too long on this side, so I'm still going to cut this down. But yeah, those cross members were actually what made it super, super heavy. And now it's much better, easier to deal with. So, I'm going to put the rest of my tools away because I am shot. I am done, done, done for the day. But that's good. I got that done for the most part, and I got finished putting in the roof vent because I was trying to eliminate my leak issues so that I can leave it uncovered more so that it gets the sun first thing in the morning. Um, but that's what I got for an update today, guys. Stay tuned. By the way, if you don't have one of these, I would really recommend going and getting it because this is actually a ratchet style load lock. 
These are designed more for pickup. So they're a little smaller. They extend up to 70 inches, which is why it's on a block. It wasn't quite tall enough, but it's actually holding up where it's indented there so that I could make sure that everything was sitting where it needed to until it was totally dry with the caulking. And I could get all the screws in exactly where they were supposed to go because of it being flexed all the way where it was supposed to be. I don't know if you can see from this angle, but it's because this whole spot up in here had a divot in it. And now granted I've taken a break so I can let my shoulders relax a bit. Cracked a beer. Um, so that I could come back out and generally show you what I was working on. But, it's getting there. Um, something else I want to do with this, which I may have to change the latch for it because it's super tight already. I want to put a seal in around this door. Um, right now it's just folded sheet with a nice, I mean it's just a nice door, but this is super tight. So, I may be able, and you can see where it used to have a different color but there's also I noticed today this part right here used to have the wiring diagram which means the plate that should have had the VIN number probably was on the inside of the door at some point not there anymore I have not yet been able to find any other numbers on this unit But I figured I'd take you for a walk now that the sun's going down because as soon as it's, actually it's probably about right now, I'm going to go ahead and still throw a tarp up over the top because I want to make sure that that caulking is going to be totally, totally dry before it gets hit with water. Because if you look here, you can see all the little holes that I still have to come up with some patching and all of that. Um, I have to use the patch tape that I got and I still need to sand it completely down to bare metal and the problem with <laughs> the moisture from recently sanding off the front so I could get to the vent it did get a little moisture so it got a little surface rust again which means I got to clean that off again before I can do the primer so I want to keep it covered because it's exposing the bare metal to the elements so the more I can keep it covered the better um, but the other thing was as you saw working on this door and I'm starting to think because I got to come through here with the grinder and clean it up so it's all smooth get it all prepped so I can do primer on this too because I have to wedge in the tracks to get it totally seated up tight as far as I can go before I anchor it all in but I'm thinking I may put the other door back on it's just that that sheet is really dented and I was hoping to put something nicer but we'll see but I'm thinking I may fix the other door and put it back together so that I still have matching framework for at least the por lower portion before I close in the top. But I haven't really decided yet exactly how I want to tackle that because the other biggest problem is I'm still waiting for hardware to arrive, which you saw in the last clips. So I would just really recommend get those load locks. These things are so handy and it's nice that they're ratchet so I can actually work them with one hand unlike these that are um, semi-truck load locks and for doing what I'm doing is this application because I, I happened to salvage a few of them when the company was dissolving the trucking side um, and I bought two that were actually out of my own pocket so I kept them but it does take three hands not only to get it set up right but then to get the bar up high enough you have to hold it with one hand and then try to crank it down but it only gives you one crank because it's not ratchet it's just a single tooth grab so you have to get it up tight to the surface you're working with before you can really push it tight it's the other reason why those used to fall down all the time inside of the cargo containers um, because with the vibrations and everything if you didn't get it super 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 tight right at first unfortunately the vibrations would kind of knock them loose I still have to fix this guy too because this this thing was damaged when I got it and it's all kinds of twisted and messed up where they just kind of welded on I guess a semi-permanent fix those lights I'm still taking off those are the old ones 
but this has to be retwisted back the other way. And I'm going to try and see if I can find another piece that I can replace that with. That way I can just cut it off at the top and replace it. Because it's just open. It's just that it got twisted so bad on this side. They just welded in a repair at the bottom. Which, it's just tube steel. But it's not even all the way up. I don't know if it'll focus in there. It's not even all the way up to the other side. There's a gap right here. Because it's smaller than the actual steel. So I could get tube steel to fix it with by taking this one off and then I could make a match. This one, there's nothing wrong with it. But all of that bottom edge is going to have to be closed back in to reinforce and build a new bumper for it and a place for the doors to latch in good and tight with. So this is all the heavy stuff that I'm still trying to work on. Um, but again, my shoulders are getting pretty bad. Um, it sucks because it's a constant issue at this point. So I'm still trying to knock out the hardest stuff first because then once the surgery happens, um, I'm going to be on light duty. So I'm trying to get all the heavy stuff done first and then that way I can still make some dents in it after I get cleared to do light duty to go right back on to whatever I need to do with this. But there's a lot more to go as far as welding in the full framework and getting that all set up. But I'm really pleased with the progress. It's definitely coming along really, really nice. All of these holes, most of them I'm going to reuse for mounting in the wall wood. Oops, that's my ladder. But you can see where all of this has to be tightened up and buttoned up good and tight so that it makes a good seal. And then this is where I cut off the worst of it. So I still have to grind this down so that it's a nice edge. This is the aluminum paneling behind it. And I'm thinking I may grab another sheet of steel to put back here just so that it matches, just to cover in these, these two corner pieces on either side to reinforce it. And then I'll put a strip here so it'll make it all look nice and uniform. It's not going to look brand new when I'm done with it. It'll just look better. But all of this still has to be heavy sanded with the... the flapper disc. I got to get this all the way down and then put the patch material on. Anywhere it's bubbled up like that it has very serious holes in it. But anything like this, this gapping here, all of this needs sealed. And there is like no seal anywhere on this horse trailer except for where they put the window on the upper part. And the old roof vent did have some very, very old seal on it, but nobody ever redid it, which is why it was so bad. And all of these aluminum frames that go around the plexi windows, I'm probably going to end up pulling those. Um, I haven't decided if I want to replace with what it already has because there's pretty big gaps where it was dented. Um, but the plexi needs replaced because it's all cracked. So there's there's huge cracks on this one over here. And then the one in the middle has got one that's kind of up in here. You can't see because of the sun glare. And then this one actually has a couple of cracks too around the edges of it. This is actually the better of the three of them. <laughs> but it, it, needs, it needs a lot of love. Like this is all... This is all cracked here. This is all busted and completely open here where this was the wrong kind of plexi to use. So it probably cracked right after they put it in because all of this around here is all misshapen. It's all bowed out. There's huge gaps here where there's a dent. There, yeah. And then it looks like they tried to re-rivet, but it wasn't done right. So it's really, really bad. So I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with those windows. But for the most part, You know, it is what it is. Then got another one there. Don't mind the sticky. That was where I taped on some plastic at one point. This is actually Bondo here. You see how thick it is. I don't know why you would Bondo a horse trailer. Because from the inside, I can't see where there was any hole that it would need that. But yeah, all of the edges. This actually isn't bad. 
it just looks ugly so it just needs cleaned up it just needs cleaned up a lot of it just needs repainted clean it all up and make it look nice again this is where I did damage because I was prying the wood off from the other side mud streaks that was from prying the wood off but see then like this even though I cut it off there's still it still comes up above where the wheel fender is supposed to attach to I have to use the jack to pull this up so I can try and get it where it needs to go once I get ready to put these in unfortunately my shoulders are getting so bad it's hard to drive the screws through the metal anymore and I really want to fix that back corner because this whole thing is completely misshapen right here it's all bent out this way so it's still taking some calculations trying to figure out exactly how I want to attack it because again I work backwards so I can see the result in my head and I have to work backwards from how to achieve that in layers and that's how I do things so I stand out here for hours just staring at this thing, just staring at it, trying to plan exactly how I want to attack this and what I am capable of doing on my own. And that's okay to do, especially when it's your own projects. A lot of people do this, they just don't talk about it. <laughs> but I stand out here for hours just staring at this thing, trying to decide exactly how I want to address certain things. And, you know, I still have to get the center caps done because they have the little decorative piece on them that are supposed to put those back together i still have the brakes to put back together those are still sitting inside on the ground it still needs a lot of love so it's gonna be a while but it's definitely getting the attention that it very much deserved the only other thing i found is that the floor supports In order to run the wiring in this thing at some point in its life, they decided to cut straight through the supports under the floor. Which means that those are weakened piece of metal. It's weakened angle iron. So I also have to cut some single strips to weld in to give it a little extra support where they cut through it. And it was intentional cutting. I apologize. The dogs have decided they're going to come hang out. But you see these two holes in the front of that angle iron there? And then that piece there in the corner, I still need to decide what I'm going to do with it. But there are several of those holes punched through it. And my brake boxes are still sitting there. I came up here and I was looking at it and this one's got some pretty bad rust there. The really good thing about this whole project is that I'm not going to use it for livestock anymore. It really is just a utility storage. The whole point in this entire trailer is to get it back to a point where it's water sealed so that I have a unit to transport everything to Missouri. And it can stay parked for a while with my stuff in it and not have any damage. So there's a lot that needs to be done to this thing. And it comes down to once I get the majority of all of the major things done. Because these still have to come out. The lights still have to come out. This door still has to come out. The fold-up manger behind it still has to come out. The saddle rack needs to be removed. And I have to look at where else it needs repair for holes. So you can see it better from the inside than the outside, but the floorboards down there need to be replaced too. And this part of it's going to be a lot more muscle, so there's only so much I'm going to be able to do. But I know I repeat myself a lot because I'm I'm planning as I'm talking too, so <laughs> forgive. Um, these ones. There's actually nothing wrong with these. They just need seal. Um, they're a little dented up on the inside, but that's okay. But you see like this, this part, this has all come loose here. But the plexi itself is actually in pretty decent shape. It's a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, there's a little bit of um, weathering where it starts to show some really minor hairline cracking in it. But that's all normal wear and tear anyway. 
just because it's been out in the weather so much. So those are the plans. I'm, I'm plugging away at it best I can, guys, but it is coming down to not doing anything on it anymore for a while. So as soon as um, I can get a minute, I'm going to go ahead and cover it back over with a tarp for the night, and then I'll keep my sanded metal from getting too much surface rust on it. And then that's it. That's it. That's what I got for this one. Stay tuned. I'll do my best on keeping you guys updated on everything, but it is going to be kind of sparse for videos for a little while while I go through what I got to go through. So being crystal clear like that, here it is in a cloud in the sky, finally. So that means it's going to be cold, which means you're going to have to deal with dew. So I put the little tarp up on the top of it just to protect the vent, but couldn't use the big one because um, one of the doggies did dookie on my derp. So <laughs> I put that one away and <clears throat> I'll grab a different one until I can get that one cleaned off. Because of course it's on the side that needs to make contact with what I'm trying to cover. Yeah, that was gross. Anyway, that's all I got guys. That's it. Please like, subscribe, comment, and by all means, give it a share.